Hey guys, welcome to SS Unit Tech, so see this side and this is continuation of SQL Server real-time scenarios. So today we are going to see about the custom string split function. So if you are going to use the below version of the 2K17, then this function was not available over there. So you can write this script that we are going to write in this video and this script will be going same as the string split function because this function is very important while you are going to work inside the real-time environment so go to on the ssms and we'll try to write the function so here this is the string split function so it will accept two parameters the first parameter that will be have the values with any separator so here the separator is comma so the second parameter that should be the separator that is comma so if we have executed this then inside the output you could see the only one column that is value and all these values those are separated by comma in the rows that you could see so this is very powerful function so for example if you are going to write a store procedure and where we have a input parameter with the employee id and that employee id is having comma separated values and you want to filter out the data based out that input parameter so first you need to convert all these comma separated input parameter value that is employee id to a single column and after that you can do the filter so this function will be going help us directly so i'll show you in the next video how you can use that in the store procedure in this video i am going to show you how you can write this string split function so first you have to write the create statement so create then the function and after that you need to specify the function name so i am going to call this as fn string split and it will again ask two input parameter first parameter that should be your input value and we can call this as worker max the second parameter that should be the separator so it should be the separator and the data type that should be worker 10 so this is for the input parameter of the function next you need to a output that will have the table so returns at the rate table the data type that should be table again and it will have only one column and that column is value column and what will be the value so that value should be worker and it should be 100 so like that we have next we can use as then we can have the begin and end so in between we need to write the logic of the function so this is the syntax of the function so as you can see the create then function the function name after that it is having two input parameter first is the actual value second is the separator and in the output we want to have a table and it is having only one column that is value and the data type that should be worker now first we need to declare a variable so we can declare a variable that is a temporary variable and the data type of this variable that should be worker 4000 now our main logic is going to start from here we need to use a loop so while first we need to check the length of this input variable if this value is greater than zero then this loop will be going to execute and in between we need to write the logic so what will be the logic so the logic is very straightforward we need to set the value on this temporary table so first as you can see in the input so it is having this value so before this comma we need to fetch the value on the temporary variable so here for comma we need to check caristy and after that we want to find out the comma so here that is a variable that is separator then put comma then we want to fetch this from this input variable so it is going to fetch where the comma is available now we can use the left function 
so left after that we want to fetch this from the input variable then put common now we can close the bracket so here it is going to fetch the value but it will also include the comma so we can have minus one so now it is going to fetch out where the first comma is available and minus one so in this case as you can see one two three four five and six so it should be going to return five from this carry index and this left function is going to use from this input string but here we need to notice one thing for example we don't have any comma so this is not available right here only this value is having so on that particular case this care index will not find any value so it's, it should be zero and this parameter is going to replace with minus one so this value will be going to have minus one so it will be going to return an error so how we can handle that so for that first we need to check by using nullif if this value is going to return minus one so on that case hold this we can remove this now you can see in this case it is going to check if this value is going to return minus one then it is going to check with the minus one if it is minus one then it is going to return as null second we can use is null function and this is null function is going to replace this minus one with the actual length what is the actual length of the your input variable so that's it so this time you can see it is going to return the value if this is minus one then it is going to return the complete length whatever the length of the input that is available now second we need to set your input variable value is equals to now we have set the first characters that you can see before the comma so next time we can remove this from this input string and in the input string will be going to have only this value so how we can do that so for that again we need to find out the care index for the separator so care index here we want to find out from the separator then put comma second it should be your input string so this is going to return the first comma from the left side so we can use the substring function directly and this time we want to get the value from this input string this is going to start from here then we can put the comma how many characters we want that should be the third parameter that we can directly mention the length of your input variable now we can close the bracket here one bracket and two bracket are missing now it looks good so here first we can see it is going to start where the first comma value is available and after that it is going to move forward but here we need to notice one thing this care index is going to return as six so it is also include the comma but we don't want the comma so we can add one right here so now it is going to start by next character after the comma but here we need to notice one thing for example if this value is going to return as zero then on that scenario what will be the case so it is zero then it is going to start from one and whatever the length that is going to pick directly so if we don't have anything left on your input string so on that scenario it is going to return as zero and here you could see it is having one so it is again going to start from your starting position so that case we don't want so here we want to check null if if this value is zero so we can use the is null function so here we can use the is null and after that here we can get the whatever the length of your input string then plus one now it looks good everything is okay only one thing is remaining that we need to do so we want to insert the value on this table 
so let me copy this and here we can write the insert statement like insert into your table and in the values we want to insert from this temporary variable everything looks good here we need to return now this function is ready let me try to execute this so it is executed successfully let me copy this function and go to a new query window and let me try to select right here so select a stick from this function inside the bracket the first parameter and the second parameter so first parameter could be anything and in the separator that should be comma let me try to execute this so once we execute then we can see everything is going to convert it successfully from this comma to a table so everything is okay so if you have still any doubt on this function then you can drop your questions in the comment box i will try to respond over there thank you so much for watching this video in the next video we will see how we can utilize this function in the real time inside the store procedure see you in the next video